You know, for years I've been kind of playing around with the idea of buying a pressure washer. But I never could make up my mind. Did I want a gas-powered or an electric? Well, I don't have to think about it anymore because I'm going to review one for you today. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage Reviews. And today I am going to be talking to you a little bit about this pressure washer with uh, it's a model P106-G30 from Giraffe Tools. Now, on the front it says 2200 psi pressure hose reel with 100 foot pressure hose. A uh, pressure hose, I'm sorry, not rose, a hose from Giraffe Tools. Now, uh, before I get started, I want everybody to know up front that Giraffe Tools is not sponsoring this video. No money exchanged hands. They're not paying me to do this video. But they did reach out to me a few weeks ago and asked me if I wanted to review this on our YouTube channel. And they did send me this to test and review. So it's kind of interesting because it's different than any of the other ones I've looked at in the past. It's wall mountable. It's got a 100 foot retractable hose, 2200 PSI is what it says here. And I believe it's 2.1 gallons per minute. So we're going to first, we're going to go out to the garage. We're going to unbox this. I'm going to mount it, show you how I mount it. And then we're going to test it out on a couple of different things. I'm going to see about using it on my driveway to clean off the driveway. Uh, I want to test out a foam can. It actually comes with a what they call a bubble sprayer. We're going to test that out on my uh, 2018 Goldwing. Uh, I would like to warn you that you really have to be careful when you use a pressure washer on a motorcycle. And I'll talk about that more uh, when we get out to the bike and we get to that part of the video. I'm also going to see about uh, maybe cleaning off under the the eaves or the, the, you know, the roof line of the house and some of the brick and things like that. We'll test it on that as well. So um, let's get to the garage. Okay, so let's tear into this box and see what we have. Okay, we've got some instructions here. There is a, not sure what that is, some sort of little tool maybe for cleaning not sure I have to read all this um, a manual pretty pretty self-explanatory here we have a bag of it looks like the nozzle this is the uh, spray gun And this looks like all of the mounting, mounting hardware. It's got some serious self-tapping screws and lugs. I'm not sure I've ever seen any that big. And then we have the... This kit also comes with what they call a bubble sprayer. It's like a foam cannon. And I'll be testing this out later uh, when we wash the motorcycle. There's also a small level included in the kit. This will be for mounting the bracket to the garage wall. And here you can see the extension wand. It has that standard quick disconnect on one end. On the other end it's threaded so it will uh, thread into the pistol grip. And then there's the four tips that go for the sprayer. And then we have a little connector for the water inlet. This will connect our garden hose to the water inlet of the pressure washer. And it comes with all the rubber gaskets needed. Now inside the box next to the unit, we'll find the actual uh, pressure wand. This will connect that extension wand on one end and will connect to the pressure washer on the other. You'll notice there is a trigger lock that is for safety. And uh, there is an extension hose also included in the kit. 
Now, the unit itself, I'd say, weighs about 40 pounds, 35 to 40 pounds. I'll have to weigh it. Uh, there is a very nice steel metal bracket for mounting to the garage wall. And the unit itself will actually slip over that bracket. You can see these little rails on the back of the pressure washer, and it will just slip down over that bracket. That makes it very easy to remove. You just basically lift it off. So my plan is to mount this in my small one-car garage. I'm going to mount it sort of close to the garage door. I'm just going to try to find a good location for it. Now, I have a hose bib installed inside my one-car garage. I had this installed when I moved into the house. That's going to be very nice because we will need access to a water supply for the pressure washer, and I will be using that water supply right there. This is the perfect time for a time lapse. Let's get the garage cleaned up, sweep up the floor. I'm even going to hose it down a little bit, just get it cleaned up and get the area ready for installation. Now I'm ready to mount the bracket and I'm looking for a stud here in the wall. And I have 16 inch studs. Now here I'm drilling a pilot hole uh, into the stud and I'm going to be drilling a half inch hole with a bit uh, which is what they recommend for their anchors. And I'm using the level they included in the kit after inserting one bolt in that top left corner. And I'm going to use a level to mark the other four holes. The plastic anchors that come in the kit don't have any kind of flange, so these would fall down behind the drywall if I tried to screw into them. So I had some that aren't as big, but they are big enough, and they do have that flange that will hold them in place while we screw into the drywall. Now that I have the bracket mounted, all I have to do is slip the unit over the bracket on those rails that are on the back side of the pressure washer. Next, I'm going to attach the wand extension to the pressure washer wand. Now I'm going to put one of the nozzles using the quick connect on the end of the wand. Next, I'm going to thread the pressure washer hose into the bottom of the wand as shown. You want to make sure all these connections are very tight. There is a location to store the wand on the back right side of the unit. It helps if you turn those nozzles toward the wall and it just slips in like this. Next, I connected my garden hose using the supplied connector. You'll notice the black ring goes to the hose. The silver goes on the unit. Now I'm ready to turn on the water supply and I'm checking for leaks as I turn it on. The next important step is to get any air out of the system by pulling the trigger before you turn the unit on. And you'll know you have all the air out of the system when you begin to see a trickle of water come out of the end of that nozzle. Now I'm going to pull some of that hose out of that uh, retractor and when you let go it will stop. It works like a typical retractor in that regard. Now let's turn the unit on. My first test was to see how the unit would work cleaning my aggregate driveway. You can see there's a lot of grunge, especially on the edge of the driveway. Now this driveway has not been pressure washed in probably 10 or 12 years. And you can see that this pressure washer is really doing a pretty nice job of cleaning off that junk off of the aggregate. It's uh, making pretty quick work of it. To demonstrate the difference, I just cleaned this one little strip just so you could see the difference in how much of that junk it's actually lifting from the aggregate driveway. Next, I want to try the pressure washer on my eaves and on the gutters. You can see a lot of junk accumulates under here. And let's give that a test next. Also some wasp nests I'd like to knock down. 
Now this is where that extension to the wand really pays off. It really makes it nice because you can get up higher. Uh, these are probably 14 feet in the air, I'm just guessing. And it's doing a really nice job of cleaning all that junk off of those eaves and off the face of the gutters. I'm pretty impressed. I can use this to clean off the brick and uh, the patio. It just really, really does a good job. Now let's test out that foam cannon on my motorcycle. Now you want to be careful anytime you're using a pressure sprayer on a motorcycle. It's actually not even advised that you do it. In fact, Honda recommends against it because if you were to put high pressure water in these electrical switches and handlebars on the handlebars or on the console, you could damage the switches permanently. So anytime you're using a pressure washer on a motorcycle, uh, you want to make sure you're at a good enough distance and that you have enough of a fan on the spray so that you're not forcing water at high pressure into those electrical switches. But right now I'm just going to use the foam cannon to soap it down. Then we'll come back and rinse it off and I'll show you how I do it. I'm actually using a detergent from the chemical guys. I'll put a link in the description below. And the purpose of this foam cannon is basically just to loosen any heavy dirt. I'm kind of staying away from the handlebars. I don't really need to get a lot of heavy soap on there anyway. So there's a little on there. It ain't going to hurt it. The soap is not the problem. The problem is the high water pressure. You don't want to force that water into those switches. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for about 30, 45 seconds. I'll come back and rinse it off. In fact, about the time it takes to swap out this cannon with the uh, tip. And I'm using the green tip, which is a uh, 25. You could probably use a 40 for this and you wouldn't have to stay quite so far back. I always want to make sure it's in there good and solid. I don't want it blowing out the end. Okay, let's rinse it off. You'll notice I'm keeping a pretty good distance when I do the dash and the, and the console and the switches. I'm, I'm gonna be pretty far back, so it's just gonna be a light mist rinsing it off. I should point out, this is not a motorcycle washing demo. This is simply a pressure washer demo. And I'm very impressed with how the pressure washer is working. I'm surprised I've gone along this long without one. But um, if I were going to finish washing this motorcycle properly, what I would do is after I did the foam cannon and the rinse, uh, I would then go back with a two bucket method and I'll show you that in a future video. I know I've been promising that for a long time, but the weather's been rather cold. Uh, but I'll come back and hand wash it with a two bucket method and then do all the other uh, parts. But for today, I'm just going to dry this off once I've rinsed it off so I can, I'm just doing this so I can shoot my pressure washer video. The only thing I would advise is rather than having this full length wand, I'd probably invest and I will invest in one of the shorter little hand grip uh, wands so that you don't have this big long wand, which is really unnecessary. It's good for doing driveways and you know under the eaves, but for a car or a motorcycle, you really don't need this long wand. And I think you can get them for about $20 or $30 on Amazon. I'll, I'll show you some, uh, but uh, other than that, I'm super, super impressed with the way this is working. Before I head to the studio, I want to make sure we properly store the unit. We want to make sure we turn the unit off first. The next step is to turn the water supply off. I'm also going to disconnect the water supply just because I feel like that's an extra measure of safety. Plus, if you want to remove the unit and take it into a warmer environment, you need to do that anyway. And then by holding in the trigger on the wand, we want to remove as much water out of the pressure hose as possible. 
it's a good idea to wait until you get almost no water coming out the end, or better yet, no water coming out the end. Gently pull on the hose and allow it to retract fully. I'm going to unplug the unit because it's supposed to get to freezing temperatures tonight. I don't want to leave this in my garage and I don't want a chance of any excess water that's left in the system to freeze. So I'm actually going to carry this back into a warmer place in one of my other garages that's heated. And it's simple. You basically unplug it, put the hoses off to one side. It has handles on each side. You simply lift it off of that mounting bracket, and then I can very easily carry it into my other garage. Okay, so I think the only thing left to do is go back into the studio and give you some of my final thoughts on this giraffe pressure hose reel. Let's get to the studio. So now that we've used the giraffe tools, what they call on their website the Grand Falls pressure washer, and it doesn't say, it doesn't have that name on the box or on the owner's manual, but I looked it up on their website, and it is called a Grand Falls Pressure Washer. Maybe they changed the name. Let's talk a little bit about it. What are my thoughts? I'm going to give you some of what I think are my pros and cons. First of all, I want to tell you right up front, uh, I am not a, an expert on pressure washers. In fact, um, I've only used one a couple of times, and I always rented those. Uh, one time we had to clean off a... a a wooden fence so before we restained it and we rented a gas powered pressure washer I've hired some people to use pressure washers they've always been gas powered now my brother has an electric pressure washer that he likes so that's really all my experience I really do, I don't have anything to compare it to so don't ask me to compare this pressure washer to another brand or model I just don't have that much experience with them I know what I need one to do. Uh, I want one that I can clean off my driveway, as I did in the video. I want one where I can use it to wash the car, wash the motorcycle, use the foam cannon. Uh, and let me tell you what I like about this particular model. Well, one thing I liked is I felt like the unit had good pressure. It, it can clean off the driveway. Now, it's not going to be as powerful as a gas-powered pressure washer. I understand that. That can be good or bad. There are cases where a gas powered can uh, provide so much pressure it can actually damage things. That could be one of the cases with a motorcycle. Uh, it could also be a case if you're uh, cleaning off a wood fence. When we rented one before, we rented a gas powered model and it literally had so much pressure, it was tearing the wood apart on the fence. So that wasn't good. An electric would have been a much better solution in that environment. I felt like the unit was relatively quiet. Uh, it was easy to install. It was very easy to mount the bracket that it hooks onto. However, I think they could improve the mounting hardware. The little plastic um, anchors should have a flange so that when you hammer them in, they don't just go into the wall. I think they are assuming that you're mounting this to either a concrete wall or where you have solid wood. But if you're working with drywall and you only have maybe three quarters, half inch, three quarters of an inch, that anchor will just go right through. As soon as you start trying to screw it in, it's just going to push it right through the drywall and it's going to fall down back behind the... I feel like the retractor worked very well. I was impressed with how easy it was to use. And um, I think it's just overall, it seems to be very well made. It seems to work well. I didn't have any issues. The only issue I had was it choked a couple of times when I was using the, um, the phone cannon. I don't know why it just kind of which the, the system was shut off, it stopped spraying. I had to let it sit for, you know, just 10 seconds and then it came back on, worked fine. Not sure why it did that. It could, maybe I didn't have something adjusted correctly on the foam cannon. Maybe it was creating too much back pressure. Like I say, I haven't used these a lot, so uh, maybe there's some learning on my, on my end. But it, it worked well. I got everything done that I needed to get done. Here are some things that concern me about this particular model. 
Number one, because it's wall mountable, which I really like because I like having it in my small garage. Uh, it's very easy for washing cars, motorcycles, uh, even cleaning the driveway in the front of my house. My issue is, what if I need to clean my back porch? That 100-foot hose isn't going to reach. So that's where you might be better off, or I might be better off, with a portable unit that could be wheeled around to the back porch or anywhere. My sidewalks out front, some of my sidewalks are beyond 100 feet. The walkway up to our house is would, would be more than 100 feet away from the unit. So that is a limitation of this particular model. However, for me personally, it's probably a good solution because 99% of the time, all I need is something for washing the car, washing the motorcycle, cleaning out the garage floors, both garages. That 100-foot hose will be perfect for that. It will work just fine. I did find that getting the wand on the on the little holder on the back of the unit to be a little clumsy because the uh, uh, the nozzles would kind of hit the back wall where I had it mounted. Um, I think it would there might be a better way to move that to the side where it's not where it's not on the back next in between the unit and the wall. I think there's very limited space. The other thing I'll probably do, and I mentioned this in the video, is I will buy one of the smaller uh, little trigger. A wand. Just I think it's easier to use the foam cannon and for washing a car. If you're washing a driveway or if you're washing the eaves of the house or a garage door, it's probably nice to have that long wand. Uh, but for the most of the stuff I do, I don't need that long extension. So uh, overall, I'm very impressed with it. I will continue to use it. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this Grand Falls pressure washer, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to my Amazon page where I have this listed. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be a big favor to me if you'd give the video a thumbs up. It really helps with our YouTube rankings. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. Put your questions in the comment section down below, or if you've had experience with pressure washers, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks again for watching Cruise Man's Reviews. I'll see you next time.